Now, I'm a cabinet secretary who reports directly to the president. Demi has only 13 million more Twitter followers than I do, so her voice can be heard. Now, Demi could have easily chosen to deal with her mental illness and substance abuse challenges in private. Everyone would have understood if she decided not to speak out about what she was going through. Instead, she decided to make it her personal mission to use her experience to help other young people who were struggling with the same challenges. For millions of young Americans, Demi is not only an encouraging voice and a powerful advocate, she's living proof of what we know to be true, that treatment works, that recovery is real, and that people with mental challenges can make incredible contributions to their communities and country if they get the care they need. For her courage and commitment as an advocate, it's my pleasure today to present this special recognition award to Demi for being a passionate advocate for America's young adults. I want to thank her for being here. Thank you, Demi. Thank you for the message of hope and resilience that you express and embody every day. And if you join me here at the podium, I get the pleasure of giving you this award. Secretary Zavilius. Um, I'm so honored to be here and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be the honorary chairperson of for Awareness Day 2013. It's really funny to be named a chairperson, honorary or not, of anything at my age. Um, but I think when people look at me, they see a young woman and yes, my life is blessed in many ways, and I'm eternally grateful for that. I have also, however, experienced my share of hardship. I've lived a lot of life already and gained a lot of perspective. As many of you know, telling my story is very important to me. And I know how significant hearing my story can be to the people I meet who have gone through and are going through similar challenges. I know this because I receive thousands and thousands of messages of thanks from people young and old who have experienced similar issues. So I can testify that there are a lot of young people out there who need to connect with someone, anyone willing to listen. I grew up in the public eye from a very young age, but the issues I dealt with were very normal. Like many, I felt the pressure to be perfect, to look perfect. And that pressure wears on kids, and especially young women. But now imagine those feelings while struggling with a mental health issue or substance use. You're constantly asking yourself, what will happen if people know my diagnosis? What if they don't want to be my friend anymore? Will they judge me? Will they support me? For me, it was more complicated. Would I lose my career doing what I love? Will I be still able to sing and act? I pretended for a long time to be okay so that I could continue to work. I didn't want to lose that part of my life because I love most about touring and making music is the connection that I make with my fans. It's indescribable. As Betty Ford once says, I think that's what we're here on this earth for, to help others. And if you can, you ought to do it. And that's why I'm here today, to tell young people who are asking themselves those questions, uncertain of what lies ahead, they are not alone. There are people that they could talk to, people that can help. But I'm also here to tell the adults in the crowd who think they're already too overcommitted to take any time to, to get to know a young person, please think again. It could be a family member, a neighbor, a fellow student, even a band member. The data that Administrator Hyde shared today shows that social connections really do make a difference and how people perceive themselves, whether they feel confident to get or keep a job, or motivated to even fill out that college application. My families and my friends really pulled together for me. I wasn't happy about their intervention, of course, until I realized how much they cared. 
They just wanted me to be healthy and happy again. And without music, it would be hard for me to stay in recovery. It's not an easy balance. Sometimes touring can take a lot on me. But it's where I feel the most strong, too. When you have a mental health issue or you're suffering through substance abuse, you're going to have days when you struggle. But healing is the first step to resilience, to getting to that point where you can say, I will not let my past define who I am today. Thank you for letting me be a part of your briefing today. I'm a survivor of mental health and addiction issues, and I am not ashamed. In fact, I'm more than honored to be here. Thank you. I get to do a lot of things about mental health and events such as these. And um, times like these um, bring the emotion for all of us because it is so important to see young people who are uh, such courageous young people and who are so successful and who are so much part of our world willing to stand up and talk about mental health issues and addiction challenges. So thank you both to Demi and to Lacey. Um, I do want to thank all the participants who took the time today and every day to make children's mental health a priority. And thanks especially to CDC and to CMS and uh, to Ileana and, and Cindy for your uh, partnership and your commitment. And uh, as I said to Lacey and Demi, for your courage and advocacy, your voices do matter. And it's clear that everything we've heard today, that older adolescents and young adults with mental health and substance use concerns face significant challenges as they transition into becoming independent adults.